I'm out here preaching Jesus Christ. You are out here preaching hate today. How's it hate? Prove it. There's a mic right there. Show me why it's hatred. I, I'm letting people literally discuss with me. Because he actually led somewhere out of the mind. He led to truth instead of just the emptiness of the human mind that circles forever and ever on points that can't be solved. Yes, that's ultimately philosophy can be good to help you grow. It is childish. We can't carry into discussion because your mic doesn't work. Great, great. Okay. Okay, who wants to challenge on the mic? Anybody got a question? See, so many people, they got a bad one for this, for God. They got a, a bad one for God. They're angry about hearing about Jesus. And it's because Jesus does require a change in us. If we're going to follow Jesus, he's going to change our life. If you follow Jesus, he's going to remove sin from your life. And if you love sin, it's going to keep you from God. See, to follow Jesus, God will actually require that you put sin to death in your life. What Jesus did on the cross is actually powerful enough to overcome your shame and your guilt and your sin. Lady, lady in the pink shorts, what's so funny? What's so funny? Is it me or something else? I'm not, it's me. What's, what's so funny about it? Every, yeah. What's that mean to you? What's that mean to you? We're lesbians. Hey. We're lesbians. Oh, we're lesbians. I don't think you're actually being honest. Your friend doesn't seem that she like to love you like that. But hey, Jesus can change people's lives. He can take away their sin. He can take away all their anger. See? Hey, don't don't abuse your friend like that. That's not very nice of you. She doesn't want you slapping her butt. <laughs> what do you guys think of Jesus right here? Here, here, wife, come here. I can do the same thing. I can kiss my wife. <laughs> if you guys want to see, I've seen people kiss. I mean, you see, God calls people away from sin because sin is destructive. People think that, people think that, uh, you know, you can just get by in life separated from God, but the truth is you can't. There's a consequence to sin. And see, that's what the cross is all about. It's God's love and his justice. Meeting. God loves each person, but God is so just, he cannot accept your sin. He cannot accept sin. God cannot accept it. He's perfect. For him to accept sin would be like you inviting a pedophile, a murderer, a thief, a rapist into your home to hurt your family. We, you may say, I'm none of those things, but we all have a, we all have a sin nature, and our sin nature and rebellion to God can become way worse than anything you could ever think. Each person out here today, you may say, I'm not a bad person, but you have a nature in you that's in rebellion to God. And that nature that's in rebellion to God can be just as bad as Hitler if given the opportunity. Yes, each human being is actually has a wickedness problem, and that's why we need God to fix us. We need God's love to fix us. We need the truth to fix us. And what God does is he offers that love freely. See, I'm not out here preaching religion today. I'm out here preaching Jesus Christ. You are out here preaching hate today. How's it hate? Prove it. There's a mic right there. Show me why it's hatred. I, I'm letting people literally discuss with me. There's a mic right go, there. I gotta go teach. I'm a philosophy professor. I'm, I'm teaching You're too. This is the greatest philosophy. The greatest philosopher ever was Jesus. Because he actually led somewhere out of the mind. He led to truth instead of just the emptiness of the human mind that circles forever and ever on points that can't be solved. Yes, that's ultimately philosophy can be good to help you grow in thinking, but it can't actually help you get to the problem of human of humanity, which is our sin nature. The only thing that can overcome the sin nature is God, because no human can solve their own problem. We all have a sin problem. It's been at work ever since the beginning. God didn't make us to be sinners, but we have choice. And when Adam and Eve sinned, they fell from God's presence. It was an avalanche of consequence. And we're all part of that world. That's what the world is today. A place where sin reigns. But God is looking to change that. God would actually like it to be a place where love reigns. But as long as sin reigns in human hearts, love can't reign. See, what Jesus does is he changes things. You know, it's kind of like we have a system of disorder. The Bible says that our heart, our inner man, our, your inner woman is actually at war with God in rebellion to God. And what God does is he changes 
the inside. You know, people try to change things from the outside in. God changes them from the inside out. That's why it talks about in the Bible that there would be a day where God would give people a brand new heart. What do you think, Miss Arizona? What do you think of Jesus? Do you believe in him? (laughs) So what's that supposed to mean? God with the umbrella. You know, Jesus died for you. It's a sad thing to live in rejection to him. It's a sad thing to live in rejection of God. It ultimately leads to hell. God is willing that nobody should perish. God doesn't want anybody to perish, but that everybody come into a saving knowledge of the truth. But there's a warfare there. The Bible says there's a spiritual warfare. There are demons that are at work in this world. There are angels too, but every spirit that doesn't bow the knee to Jesus Christ that fell from the presence of God is at work in this world to lead people to temptation, to destroy their life. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So, you know, if you need hope today, hope is found in Jesus. If you need some hope today, hope is found in Jesus. This world is a very hopeless place. When you think of it, everybody's going to die one day. Pretty crazy to think, right? Each person out here, 10 out of 10 people will one day die. But are you right with God? What about you? Are you right with God? Would God say so? Because he's the judge. Think of it. Just as you go to class, think of that question. Would God say so? You know, God's calling everyone, everywhere, to repent and to believe. It actually takes more faith to be an atheist. Yes, it takes more faith to be an atheist. Because if you're an atheist, you're saying that somehow random chance brought about a system of intricate order. Random chance brought about your DNA, which is more complex than any coding that humanity has ever been able to come up with. Because no no code... You know, humans are trying their best to code artificial intelligence. Even that isn't life. That's not an artificial organism that can develop itself. Humans, humans don't even compare, you know, in terms of intelligence to the, the pinky nail of God. So it's, it's on. You can. Oh, okay. I, I just a, a question about the, the random chance thing. Uh, I'm a neuroscience and cognitive science major and... Uh, uh, a lot of the artificial intelligence uh, principles actually use uh, what are, what's known as stochastic uh, computation, which is random uh, chance-based or chance-driven computation to arrive at uh, complex solutions to problems. What, what would you say about that? Well, I would say that those, are still, those equations for the random chance are still being programmed by humans. So they're not, they're not uh, arising artificially. Well, you, you also have... Uh, pull, pull the uh, stand back just oh, a little because there's, feed, there's that. feedback. Feedback, yeah, okay. okay. Is that better? Yeah, it's better. Okay, sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, well, uh, what would you say then about um, sort of naturally driven selective mechanisms that have been uh, uh, revealed to or at least you know, are believed to drive you know, the emergence of uh, complexity, say, for example, as a, like natural selection? Okay, so in natural selection, we do see um, components in DNA that can, um, that can respond to outside situations. So, for example, you know, if a human uh, like me or you that has light skin goes to Africa and we have kids and kids and their kids, you know, DNA has, their, our DNA has the ability to adapt in that component, but you don't see any kind of adaptation from um, kind of kind, you know, in in science. So, for example, um, you never see any, you can see a bird change in attributes, but you don't see a bird change from having no wings and to, you know, now having arms and legs. Right, yeah, those are pretty uh, significant changes, but what you can see are... um what are what are known as homologous changes, where like the lengths of different. What? Is it still going? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me let me pull it back just a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm trying to adjust this feedback. Uh, I think that's a little too far. Yeah. Uh, th- there's a range. Okay. So, so uh, one of the ways that uh, we address the kind of um, the speciation problem, or, or the speciation problem is classically addressed.